for too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government, while the people have borne the cost. We take Gotham from the corrupt! The rich! The oppressors of generations who have kept you down with myths of opportunity. And we give it back to you. The people. We are not merely transferring power from one administration to another, or from one party to another. But we are transferring power from Washington, D.C., and giving it back to you, the people. God of yours. None shall interfere. Do as you please. This is your celebration. And this, the United States of America, is your country order. They were completely ignored by the mainstream U.S. press. And in his Christmas speech, we see some startling similarities between Putin and Trump, both of whom seem to recognize the fact that the new world order powers are aligned against sovereign states, aligned against Christianity, aligned against traditional morals, and aligned against the family. In his incredibly important speech, Putin says, we see that many Euro-Atlantic states have taken the way where they deny or reject their own roots, including their Christian roots, which form the basis of Western civilization. In these countries, the moral basis and any traditional identity are being denied. National, religious, cultural, and even gender identities are being denied or relativized. There, politics treats a family with many children as equal to a homosexual partnership Faith in God is equal to faith in Satan. And guys, here's the Pizzagate DC Petter Ring bombshell that Putin dropped. And I quote, The excesses and exaggeration of political correctness in these countries indeed leads to serious consideration for the legitimization of parties that promote the propaganda of pedophilia. Putin clearly knows about the elite's penchant for pedophilia. And Tom DeLay himself has warned the American people. Well, we've already found a, a secret memo uh, coming out of the Justice Department. They're, they're, they're now going to go after 12 new perversions, things like bestiality, uh, polygamy, uh, uh, having sex with little boys and making that legal. Putin continues. The people in many European states are actually ashamed of their religious affiliations and are indeed frightened to speak about them. Guys, as a side note, for those who've never read the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which is claimed to be nothing more than a hoax or a forgery, I'd encourage you to read those protocols and then consider the war that is being waged that Putin is describing in this speech and then ask yourself, is something behind the scenes driving this agenda? And do Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin stand in some opposition to it? Putin says Christian holidays and celebrations are abolished or neutrally renamed as if one were ashamed of those Christian holidays. With this method, one hides away the deeper moral value of these celebrations. And of course, he's referring to the birth of Jesus Christ and the rebirth of the human race through the blood of Jesus Christ. Putin says, and these countries try to force this model onto other countries globally. I am deeply convinced that this is a direct way to the degradation and primitivization of culture. This leads to deeper demographic and moral crisis in the West. What can be a better evidence for the moral crisis of a human society than the loss of its reproductive function? And today nearly all developed Western countries cannot survive reproductively, not even with the help of migrants. Without the moral values that are rooted in Christianity and other world religions, without rules and moral values which have formed and been developed over millennia, people will inevitably lose their human dignity. We can see the degradation of family in our own society tearing us apart. Putin stands in opposition to that degradation. And yet the mainstream mockingbird media would label this man an enemy of humanity and an enemy of the United States. Putin continues, and we think it is right and natural to defend and preserve these moral values. One has to respect the right of every minority 
to self-determination, but at the same time there cannot and must not be any doubt about the rights of the majority. And here's where Putin starts to sound a lot like some of the things Donald Trump said when he was running for president. Quote, at the same time as this process at a national level, we observe on an international level the attempts to create a unipolar, unified model of the world, to relevantize and remove institutions of international right and national sovereignty. Trump himself has said the number one way to preserve peace and prosperity is through the sovereign state. We will no longer surrender this country or its people to the false song of globalism. The nation state remains the true foundation for happiness and harmony. I am skeptical of international unions that tie us up and bring America down. And under my administration, we will never enter America into any agreement that reduces our ability to control our own affairs. And the sovereign state stands in stark opposition to the Rockefeller, Rothschild, Soros desire for a new world order, one world government. Putin says, in such a unipolar, unified world, there is no place for sovereign states. Such a world would need merely vassals. And when he refers to vassals, think of the way the EU is set up. Thank goodness it's falling apart. But the EU has unelected bureaucrats in Brussels that supersede democracy, that supersede the will of the people, and that in turn only enforce the tyranny of the banking elite which controls the EU. And in this clip, Putin concludes, from a historical perspective, such a unipolar world would mean the surrender of one's own identity and of God-created diversity. Guys, when he says the surrender of one's own identity, it is exactly what the New World Order wants. It wants to cloud the lines between men and women, between right and wrong. It wants willing subjects that will bow down before the technological beast system of one world government, of one world currency, of the will of the banking elite, the satanic banking elite, as exemplified by Pizzagate, by Pedogate, by Jimmy Savile and those that would cover up the crimes against children. Some of us see it, some of us feel it. It's time to expand your thinking. You will need to reset everything you thought you knew about the world, about the people you trust, about history, about yourself. Let me tell you a story. For a very long time, our world has been under the growing influence of a vast transgenerational criminal mafia that was able to rise up to the highest levels of power. We didn't know because they talked and acted just like you and me. We thought we could recognize true criminals by their words and actions, but were deceived by their sophisticated speech, wealth, education, beauty, and power. Through a system of threats, blackmail, and bribery, they would come to occupy the highest levels of power in government, corporations, and education. You may know them as the deep state, or cabal. Most dangerously of all, they achieved almost total influence over the media, their primary means of controlling the good people of the world who were just trying to get on with living. They used this power to slowly convince us that we were the problem, that we were a threat to each other. They used race, gender, and religion to set us apart, and rewrote history to validate these false claims. They funded both sides of wars just to crush our potential to prosper and succeed as a peace-loving and creative force of good for the world. Now, with their firm grasp on the media, we drank in their entertainment and lies as they began their final phase, the total takedown of America. We were the brightest remaining beacon of freedom and humanity's last hope. They knew that if they could take America, the rest of the world would follow. They cut deals that led us to hand over total control of the money system to a private central bank. The Federal Reserve. This made it possible to influence Washington, D.C., and most of our presidents since then were beholden to the criminals in one way or another. Things took a really bad turn when they concentrated vast power into the hands of the many civilian intelligence agencies throughout the world. They said they were there to protect us. Instead, these agencies were catastrophically weaponized to boost drug and human trafficking cartels, assassinate political opponents, undermine the military, and change regimes of foreign governments who did not want to adopt the centralized system of money control. 
You might think they would choose simply to remain in the shadows running their criminal activities while we carried on with our lives. But as long as there was freedom for the people to prosper, the Cabal were always at risk of being discovered and shut down. There was no way to continue without a plan to eliminate all threats to their survival, even if it meant imposing a single world government under their jurisdiction, where no national identity, police force, or military could stop them. They called it globalism. Exploiting our emotions and our instincts of compassion, they found a way to justify dismantling cultures, borders, and national identity under the guise of social justice, creating false narratives of racism, colonialism, and capitalism to destabilize and ultimately collapse society so they were no longer secure enough to reject this dark plan for the world. Where there was no history to distort, they would use wars to force a catastrophic mass migration of peoples across borders to destabilize and weaken cultural identity. When we didn't accept this, they called us intolerant and shamed us into silence. By 2008, America was in advanced stages of economic decline, with disastrous trade deals leading to widespread loss of jobs and a devastating financial crisis. The Cabal had now absorbed another extensive criminal empire that was aligned with a twisted and radical form of Islam. Realizing the competition could threaten their goals, they decided to cooperate and agree to mutual terms. Now, a hostile foreign enemy was able to insert a subordinate into the U.S. political system who would become the president. Saudi Prince Al-Walid bin Talal funded Obama's Harvard education and took power by proxy, picking his entire cabinet while buying vast quantities of control in our largest media companies. The Western faction of the cabal was different. It was another kind of sick altogether. A dark and deeply sinister death cult with a strong reliance on symbolism and numerology, with levels of cruelty unimaginable to all right-thinking people. The reach and scale the secret society had achieved would have sent destabilizing shockwaves across the world were it ever to be publicly exposed. They were highly skilled at living just below the surface as they worked their way into the United States presidency. Massini wrote to Pike. Now, Albert Pike is this high mason who wrote this the manual, if you like, of Scottish Freemasonry. He said the following. We must allow all of the federations to continue just as they are. It must appear as things are as they were in the beginning. With their systems, their central authorities, and diverse modes of correspondence between high grades of the same right, organized as they are at present, but we must create a super right, which will remain unknown, to which we will call those masons of high degree whom we shall select. With regard to our brothers in masonry, these men must be pledged to the strictest secrecy. Through this supreme right, we will govern all Freemasonry, which will become the one international center, the more powerful because its direction will be unknown. Now, Albert Pike wrote a letter to Mancini, and that was dated August 15, 1871, in which he propagated that there should be a world order, a one order where all nations are under the control of one central organization. And in order to achieve this, they planned, and there are numerous quotes for this, so I've put a number on the screen, because some will say, I don't trust this, I don't trust that, I don't trust the other. There are references down there, there are references up there, there will be references in other slides, so it comes from different sources. He said, and this was, by the way, on display in the British Museum, and could be seen there until it was taken away. The First World War, to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia, protector of orthodoxy, and bring about an atheistic communistic state. Did that happen? Yes, now that was written long before this event. Long before this event. This was written in 1871, and this war broke out in 1914. The Second World War, that's also written long before the event. To originate between Great Britain and Germany, to strengthen communism as, athe as antithesis to the Judea Christian culture, and bring about a Zionist state in Israel. Did it achieve this objective? Yes. In fact, after this war, Israel, in its present form, was reinstated under the protection of Britain. And then, interestingly enough, a Third World War, a Middle Eastern war involving, involving Judaism and Islam and spreading internationally. That's fascinating. Is that uh, on the cards, or what do you think?
certainly sounds like we are on track. Well, here's another quote. Uh, just in case people don't like that quote. Massini with Pike developed a plan for three world wars so that eventually every nation would be willing to surrender its national sovereignty to a, to a world government. The first war was to end the Tsarist regime in Russia, the second to allow the Soviet Union to control Europe, the third world war was to be in the Middle East between Muslim and Jews and would result in Armageddon. Interesting. Now, how were they going to do it? Let's read what Albert Pike wrote about these wars and uh, how they were going to be uh, unleashed. He wrote, quote, we shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist, so the destroyer and the atheist, and we will provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism. Origin of savagery in the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the minority of revolutionaries will exterminate these destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity will receive the pure light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. The destruction of Christianity and atheism both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Wow, what a clever plan. So you rub the two systems which you create up against the other. You create atheism as an antithesis to the Judeo-Christian culture. You have these two clash until they rub each other up. And then out of that, you will get a new world order where you have a new religion, which is far more esoteric and actually honors Satan. Isn't that a rather clever plan? Well, it's very successful. That is why Ordo Ab Kao, Ordo Ab Kao is the, the verse, if you like, that uh, Freemasonry uses. This is one of their documents, remember, that I photographed in a Masonic lodge. letter on the t-shirts of Trump supporters in Tampa, the letter on signs like the one you're looking at saying, we are Q. So what is Q? You should instead be asking, who is Q? Q is an anonymous user who started posting cryptic messages in the dark fever swamps of the internet last year. Somebody claiming to be a high level government official with top security clearance, sharing what Q calls breadcrumbs about the so-called deep state supposedly conspiring to take down President Trump. So this QAnon conspiracy theory network then tries to follow those crumbs, those conspiracy clues, and floods YouTube and other sites with what they found. In this fringy alternate universe, senior Democrats run a secret child sex trafficking network. In the real world, they do not. In this alternate universe, the special counsel investigation is actually just a cover to really take down Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama because they were corrupted by the Kremlin. Another conspiracy theory. And the hot topic right now for QAnon, that the military convinced Donald Trump to run for president in 2016, part of a long game so the president and his military allies can now take down the deep state. See, here's the thing. The difference today is that these fringe theories ricocheting off the shadowy corners of the Internet are now starting to see the light of day, like Q supporters showing up at rallies like last night's. More traction after some famous faces, Roseanne Barr, Kurt Schilling, the former major leaguer, brought up some of these conspiracies online. I want to bring in now NBC's Ben Collins. Alexi and Saho are back with me as well. So, Ben, you have been owning a lot of the reporting on QAnon. The Washington Post puts it this way. Quote, what Tuesday's rally in Tampa made apparent is that devotees of these falsehoods, some of which are specific to faith in the president, others garden variety nonsense with racist and anti-Semitic undertones, don't just exist in the far reaches of the web. Talk through how prevalent, how widespread this is or is not. Yeah, we're talking videos with hundreds of thousands of views, probably millions of people believing in this. And you saw it last night at that uh, Tampa rally for Donald Trump. This is showing up everywhere. And it's showing up on Amazon.com. Like you can buy Q merchandise on Amazon.com. Uh, until last month, until we alerted Apple, 
uh, the number 10 app, the paid app on the app store amongst like Minecraft and things your kids would see was a Q-Drops app. And again, this is bananas stuff. This is stuff like, you know, right. Hillary Clinton is like mixing baby blood into cement, like totally bananas off the chart stuff. But people really believe this stuff and uh, it's because the platform just let it go unchecked. Friends, a minute to get in. Thank you all for coming on short notice. And uh, certainly, Happy New Year. Welcome back. It's good to be back. We're going to kick 2019 off just slightly differently. Um, and I'd like to welcome a very special guest for an appearance here in the briefing room, our very great President Donald J. Trump. Nice. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I just want to start off by congratulating Nancy Pelosi on being elected Speaker of the House. It's a very, very great achievement. And uh, hopefully we're going to work together and we're going to get lots of things done like infrastructure and so much more. I know they want to do that very badly. So do I. So hopefully we're going to have a lot of things that we can get done together. And I think it's actually going to work out. I think it'll be a little bit different than a lot of people are thinking. Uh, so I congratulate Nancy. Tremendous, tremendous achievement. And I just wanted to explain to folks that I'm with on the day. For dinner, the gathering came amid concerns about tensions with North Korea and the Iran nuclear deal. During a photo op in the White House dining room, President Trump made this puzzling comment. And now the president was asked again what he meant by calm before the storm, and he responded, you'll find out. The White House has not clarified the comments further. Mr. Trump faces an October 15th deadline. Do you not think an angel rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm? This work continues. The story goes on. And an angel still rides in the whirlwind and directs this storm. God bless you all. And God bless America. Thank you. 